Welcome to King's Church. We're so glad you could join us. Hello, Hello. welcome Welcome to King's King's Church. Church. We're We're so so glad glad you're you're here. here. Welcome to King's Church. It's great to have you here. Good morning and welcome to King's Church. My name is Steve and I lead the team here and uh, it's so good to have you with us, whether you're part of our church family, um, just greetings, uh, brilliant to be able to kind of do this. Um, Also, if you're new and you're just checking us out for the first time, we are so glad that you're here. Last Sunday, we were celebrating the fact that Jesus is risen, that he burst forth from the grave, that we celebrate the fact there is an empty tomb. And uh, today we're continuing uh, in that vein somewhat, uh, believing that after Jesus rose again, that he spent 40 days appearing to his disciples, that there are many eyewitnesses to the fact that there is a resurrection, that there is good historical um, yeah, evidence, testimony that he came back from the dead to new life. And uh, we've got a real treat. Wolfgang and Michelle are going to be speaking to us from John's Gospel, unpacking one of those occasions where Jesus appears in lockdown, in a locked room with some of his disciples and speaks peace into their lives. But first, Anna is going to lead us in a time of worship. And I just want to encourage you to come with your hearts open ready to receive a word of encouragement every time we gather to worship whether it's on youtube or zoom or i know we're all longing uh, to be back in person one day but right now this morning this sunday god has a word to bless you he wants to encourage you and so often we receive it by coming into his presence and saying you are worthy and you're worth my worship you're worthy of my adoration because you came god you came to save me you rescued me out of sin and death and you are resurrected. And so we're going to celebrate this morning. So let's come with our hearts ready. And I'll hand over to Anna.
62 says, Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, O oh people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. There's an invitation for us today to come and find shelter with Jesus, to come and rest on his goodness, to come and declare that he's the rock that we stand on, that he is solid ground, that everything else around us might shake, but Jesus is solid ground. We've been planted on solid ground. So why don't you just bring your heart to him today, pour out your heart, pour out what's in there, pour out your feelings, pour out your thoughts and pour out your praise as we come to God. We're going to sing about him, we're going to declare his goodness, we're going to enjoy him together this morning. Thank you God. Thank you God. Thank you Jesus.
thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to keep singing and playing just so you have a bit of background noise. But I just want to encourage you to come and do what that song says, to come and pour out your heart to God, to come and rest your heart on his truth, on his kindness, on his grace. So why don't you do that this morning? Why don't you pour out your heart to God? And as you do, allow praise to rise, allow worship to rise. Speak out the truth of who God is, of his promises, of his goodness. We'll, um, we'll sing together. Let's, all, let's raise our voices and just declare the goodness of God. Pour out your hearts to him.
Jesus, we exalt you. We lift you high. Thank you that you are our rock. Thank you that you're our fortress. Thank you that you're our strong tower. God, thank you that you are the place that we run to over and over again and find your kindness, your love, your compassion, your mercy. God, we love being your children. We honour you today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Anna. I want to greet you again if you're new to King's Church and uh, maybe this is your first Sunday, one of your first few. Uh, you're so welcome. And if you'd like more information about who we are as a church, you can head to our website, which is King's Church Birmingham, um, and you can click the bottom right hand uh, kind of button, connect uh, button there, and uh, fill in that form. And it just means as you give us some of your details, we can um, let you know about different things that are going on in the life of the church. We would love to stay in touch with you. One person who's joined our church this year is Phoebe Cook and Andy has taken some time just to have a little chat with her, catch up about uh, the Alpha course that she's been on and then the launch group which is a follow-on from Alpha, just exploring faith, exploring who Jesus Christ is and then looking at how one might begin to follow him and what it means to be a disciple. So Andy is going to chat to Phoebe and we're going to share that with you now. So hey everyone, uh, it's great, great to be with you. I have Phoebe with me today, who came on one of our recent uh, Alpha courses. Um, maybe I'll first ask Phoebe, how, where, where are you living, what are you up to at the moment? Um, and yeah, tell us a tiny bit about yourself. Yep, um, so I'm Phoebe, I live in Harborn at the moment. Um, I've been with King since August last year. Um, I'm a master's student studying international development and I work as an arts administrator with the rest of my time. Awesome. And how did you how did you hear about Alpha and like what did you think you were getting into? What was your like ideas before you came on? Um, well, I because I I was really interested in kind of joining a church and learning more about Christianity. So I I reached out to Kings, and it was Andy. It was actually you who recommended Alpha to me. Um, so Pee myself up. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> um, and and yet yeah, from I I don't really know what I expected. I just thought it would be like. I thought it would be a bit just people showing you like, oh yeah, this is what it is, you know, and just kind of almost like teaching you, but that completely wasn't what it turned out to be. It was so much more like um, discussion based and you got to ask loads of questions and yeah. Yeah. Definitely so how, not what I expected. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So how did you find it? Did, like, did, what did you enjoy about or, you know, find useful or yeah. How was the experience basically the whole? Yeah. Course? Um, I mean, I loved it. I think it was just so good to have an opportunity to firstly learn um, about different topics each week to do with Christianity, but also to have like a really open discussion where you could ask kind of any question that came into your head. Um, yeah. And ev everyone was just really kind of accepting of it and wanted the, the chance to talk to you and mm -hmm. like help you like gain new understanding. And it was, it was just so insightful and really kind of helped shape me and like, my views and my relationship with God. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And then you you finished Alpha and then you went straight on to the launch group, didn't you? So maybe you yes. could tell us, tell us just a tiny bit about how that's been and yeah, your experience there as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm so grateful that uh, <laughs> Alpha led me to launch group. I love them both. Um, <laughs> launch group was a lot more like asking kind of Bible study and yeah. kind of any questions we have coming off that. And each week, again, we kind of tackle like a big topic, um, but it delves a lot more kind of into detail about yeah. like the Bible and what kind of Bible teaches us. Um, but again, it was a great forum as well for asking anything. Um, yeah. And like we have a section where you ask, ask any big questions that you have kind of from your week. If anything's like popped up into your head that you don't, you don't like know the answer for, you can't really <laughs> find it. Um, and it's been really great. That is awesome. And you still haven't been to King Church in person, have you? So hopefully, hopefully <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah, it'll be really weird finally meeting everyone in person at church when I've met so many people online. Um, I'm ex I'm so excited. No, no, that's great. Well, no, thank you so much. And, and we're, we're delighted you're part of the church and got to know us through the online stuff. So, um, so yeah, look forward to, to seeing you in person at King Church in, in service soon. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Phoebe. Thank you. Bye. 
Thank you, Andy, and thank you, Phoebe. What a privilege to hear that testimony. What a joy to see the work of God uh, that, is, that is going on in Phoebe's life. Thanks so much, guys. Over the last term, uh, we had the privilege of going through and exploring our cultural values. Uh, we were looking at what kind of church family we feel God is calling us to be, a church that is generous and loving, a church that's also authentic, uh, courageous in what we do, but also honouring to one another as we do it. And uh, I want to encourage you to head along to a life group this term because we're going to be un investigating, unpacking a little bit about what it means uh, to be part of a church like that, what it might mean for us individually. And then also this term, I just wanted to flag up to you, we're going to be starting a new preaching series in the book of 1 John. Uh, I'm really expectant that God is going to speak to us, that he wants to uh, speak about what it means that God is a God of love and also a God of light, that God came in the flesh, that we, we celebrate the fact that the resurrection has actually happened and therefore there's, there's all number of implications for that, the fact that Jesus came in the flesh in the first place. He wasn't just a spirit, he wasn't just a man, he was God and man, 100% God, 100% man. You know, all those types of things I think it's been a really fascinating series and very timely for us as we unpack some of that together. And then finally, I just want to um, highlight to you, if you're part of the church, that our diary for the next kind of two months, three months is, is available. Uh, you can head to our website, King Church Birmingham. The diary's there. If you have a church suite login, you can pick up all the details as well. Just for those of you that like to plan your diaries, um, it should all be up to date for you. I'm now going to hand over to Wolfgang and Michelle Vondai, um, and uh, a little bit different to normal, but normally we have one speaker. Um, actually, both Wolfgang and Michelle are going to be addressing us uh, alternately, and I just want to encourage you to come with your hearts open to hear from God's Word. We'll start with a reading, and then they're going to unpack an encounter that Jesus has with his disciples when he appears to them in a locked room, and he changes their worlds. The fact that that he is risen is a game changer and he doesn't come angrily or hastily he comes with peace and so uh, I'm going to hand over to Michelle first I believe and Wolfgang um, let's hear the word of God together today's reading is from John chapter 20 verses 19 to 31 on the evening of that day the first day of the week the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood among them, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and, the, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who... Who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his of the disciples which are not written in this book but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that by believing you may have life in his name. Happy Resurrection Sunday! No, I know, Easter was last Sunday what we traditionally know as Resurrection Sunday. But as we heard in the scripture, the story takes place on that same evening of the resurrection. So in effect, it is still Resurrection Sunday. 
On a more somber note, however, for the disciples, it wasn't a joyous time. They were in lockdown, huddled together, afraid of the Jewish authorities. They didn't know what exactly was going on. Peter and John had heard reports from Mary and had seen the empty tomb, but they were very uncertain. They were confused. They were doubtful. They were afraid. They'd had all these plans for the future with Jesus, and they didn't quite yet understand what had just happened. They saw Jesus crucified, and the tomb is now empty, and they're afraid of the Jews because if the tomb is empty, surely the disciples had something to do with it. And so they, there they are together in lockdown, and they're not really sure what to make of it. And then into their lockdown, Jesus appears. They're shocked. But after they've seen him, they're overjoyed. So we too have been in lockdown for over a year. And thankfully now we are starting a phased return into normal life. And yet many of us are still strongly affected by what's taken place over the past year. Some of us lost our jobs, our university places. Some of us have been studying online against our will. Some of us have taken a financial hit. There have been all sorts of questions about our future, questions that we're looking for answers for, but we aren't quite sure like what's happening. And, and maybe we've even started questioning where Jesus is in the midst. And now that we're coming out of lockdown, does that solve our problems? Does that answer our questions? There's a vaccination, so now we can get back to normal living and are our doubts taken care of? Today, I invite you to come along on a journey. Wolfgang and I are going to look at Thomas and his questions, his honest questions about who Jesus is and what does it mean for him? What does it mean for his future? And I'll reflect on Jesus's response to Thomas and what that means for us today, whether we're in lockdown or we're in our normal routine. Yes, Michelle, Thomas is very much at the heart of this story. And for many of us, Thomas has a bad reputation. We think of him as the unbelieving disciple, the doubting Thomas. For one reason or another, Thomas has obtained the reputation that he is the personification of doubt, of unbelief, the way we should not be, the way we should not behave. But perhaps we need to look at Thomas with a slightly different perspective. After all, we know very little about Thomas. He is not uh, explained much in the other Gospels. And it is only in two stories in the Gospel of John that we find more about his character, our story, and in a previous episode where we find a rather courageous Thomas, whereas the other disciples are afraid to go with Jesus back to Judea. Jesus wanting to go to raise Lazarus from the dead, but the disciples afraid that the Jews are planning to stone him because he had blasphemed against God. It is Thomas who rises up and says to his brothers and sisters, let us go with Jesus, that we may also die with him. This courageous Thomas, where did he go? Did his courage disappear? In our story, we find him in very different circumstances. During this lockdown, he was separated from the other disciples, perhaps in his own lockdown behind closed doors. But he did not witness the resurrection. He did not witness that the raised Jesus appeared before the other disciples. And so he could not believe their testimony. He was perhaps wondering if they made this up. Perhaps they just wanted to encourage him. Perhaps they had other reasons to create this story. 
But for Thomas, he was not able to make a decision. Thomas was wavering. Thomas was struggling. Thomas was doubting. Doubt. It is really neither a decision for belief nor a decision for unbelief. Doubt is very much a threshold. Doubt is a question. Doubt is a crossroads towards belief or unbelief. We find these two options very much displayed in the story of Thomas. On the one hand, Thomas could go towards unbelief. He, after all, saw Jesus die. He saw his suffering. He saw the wounds inflicted on his body. He knew exactly that Jesus had been crucified. He saw him buried. He saw him in the tomb, that this Jesus could not possibly live. For Thomas, the wounds in the body of Jesus were irreconcilable with the news of the resurrection. And so Jesus, uh, Thomas says, unless I see these wounds, I cannot possibly believe. It is really a road potentially towards unbelief. But on the other hand, we also see the possibility of belief, the possibility of faith in the, Thomas of sto in the story of Thomas. Because Thomas does not give up. Thomas does not withdraw from the other disciples. Thomas, indeed, he knows very much what it takes to have faith. Thomas wants to verify his faith. Unless I see those wounds is really a way of saying, if I can verify that, I know that it takes more than just to trust. It is perhaps a, a verification of the basis of the resurrection. For Thomas, he's pushing towards faith. For Thomas, it is to verify that the resurrection must be a physical resurrection, that if Jesus was really alive, then Jesus had to be raised in his body, then the wounds of the dying Jesus must also be the wounds of the living Jesus. And so perhaps Thomas is the most courageous of the disciples, because Thomas is the one who is pushing forward, who wants to find truth, who wants to verify his faith, who wants to identify what it takes to have faith. And so unless is a much more positive claim than we see it in the other option. Thomas is still questioning which way to go, but he provides all the means necessary for faith. And so Thomas does not run away, but stays with his brothers and sisters. Not one day, not three days, not five days, not seven days, but after eight days of lockdown, where the doors are locked again, we find Thomas is still with his brothers and sisters. That is because he knows that if he was to find that Jesus was raised from the dead, he would find it most likely with his brothers and sisters. That if he was to find faith, he would find it where others had found faith. He knew that he had to be in the place and he had to be in the time where uh, the conditions were right to find faith. And that was in the midst of his brothers and sisters who had already witnessed Jesus. If Jesus were to come again, he would come where he had also come before. And that's where we find Thomas. Because Thomas is really providing all the means for faith. Thomas is ready for faith. Thomas is ready for Jesus. And Michelle will now show us how Jesus responds to Thomas. One might expect that Jesus would respond to Thomas in a way of rebuke. Over centuries, we've seen Thomas be called doubting Thomas or unbelieving Thomas. And so naturally, we might think Jesus would rebuke Thomas for his doubt and for his unbelief, but he doesn't. The first thing he says when he reappears in the midst of the locked space is, peace be with you. Once again, he brings his peace with him wherever he goes. In fact, his greeting to Thomas is the third time in this passage that Jesus says, peace be with you. And so one of the things that we know about Jesus is that he brings peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He has already told his disciples many times 
that the peace that he gives to them is not the peace that the world gives. We read in Paul that there's peace that passes all understanding to guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. This peace is the peace that he gives to Thomas in the midst of Thomas's questions. What a relief for those of us who have doubts and fear and question and worry and anxiety. Jesus brings us peace. Not only that, but what's very interesting about this encounter is that Thomas has come back to the fold, so to speak. He's rejoined his community of faith. And even though he still is questioning and doubting and unsure of the future, when Jesus comes, he comes seemingly specifically for Thomas because he speaks to Thomas directly. Peace be with you. Look, Thomas. He doesn't address Peter, he doesn't address John, he doesn't address Andrew. He says, come Thomas, take a look at my hands, take a look at my side, see the wounds. He's coming back for Thomas. He's coming back for one. He's the good shepherd, leaving the 99 and going out to find the one. Obviously in this context, Thomas is among the 99. And so he hasn't disappeared into, you know, some nether region and Jesus has to go and pursue him. Thomas has chosen to stay within the community of faith in spite of his doubts, in spite of his questions. And Jesus comes back to that community of faith and speaks directly to Thomas. Jesus is the good shepherd. So not only does he bring peace with him wherever he goes, but he also is willing to go to the one who has the doubts and to the one who has the questions. And he's not offended and he's not bothered. In fact, he invites Thomas to look and to explore and to question. And I think what's relevant for us, particularly in the 21st century and in this time of intense upheaval with a pandemic is that Jesus is not afraid of our questions. Jesus is not offended by our uncertainty. Jesus is not rebuking us at any time for any reason for our doubt or for our fear. He brings us peace. He brings us himself. He is the good shepherd taking care of his sheep. So where are we at the end of this story? We see that lockdown is very much a story of struggle, of doubt. It is a story that shows us that in the midst of such circumstances, it is not unnatural to question. It is normal to wonder where to go, not to know which way to turn, not to have answers. We see that doubt is not evil. The letter of Jude encourages us in verse 22 that we should have compassion on those who doubt, to be like Jesus who has compassion on Thomas. The story encourages us to be like Thomas, to seek uh, what it takes to have faith, to be like Thomas and to be courageous, to seek to verify the truth, to make all means necessary that we can find our way to Jesus. But the story also tells us to heed the words of Jesus, that we should believe even if we do not see, that we can trust the testimony of the church that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, that in the midst of circumstances where the lights are dim or dark, God may not be seen, but God is still with us. That God's testimony is true, even if we cannot see God. In this time, it is important to know that God comes for us. That Jesus is the good shepherd who hears us and to return, who returns for us. That Jesus comes into the midst of these circumstances and proclaims peace to us. As Jesus turns to us, let us also turn to Jesus. 
Let us find the right circumstances. Let us put into place the right times and the right places that we can build up our faith, that we can find our faith. Let us be like Thomas, who knows exactly where to go, with whom to be and what to do so that he can encounter the risen Jesus. So we also need to make time, need to make space for Jesus in our struggles and in our uncertainties. For us, it is important to join in the community that has encountered this faith, to find the fellowship that has encountered this place, to put into practice the kind of habits that we have as a church, to follow the prayers and the songs and the rituals and the sacraments that we have as a church. Those are the places and the times. Those are the means where we can build up our faith. Those are the opportunities where we can speak to others and hear their testimony. Those are the times where we can find the truth. Those are the places where we can encounter the risen Jesus. In the midst of those opportunities as we find them together, we can rejoice with Thomas and say, I do believe. We can speak together with Thomas and say, despite our doubts, despite our struggles, despite our questions, despite the rocky and rugged road that our lives as Christians, as believers are, Jesus, you are my Lord, you are my God. So at the end of our message, we want to recognize that we have been all through a very difficult time and in our time, struggle and doubts and questions have been typical for many of us. We want to end our time with a blessing and a prayer to all of us as we go through these times of uncertainty, that we can speak peace to you and encourage you. I want to speak faith to all of you who are lacking faith. May God supply to you faith in abundance enough faith for you that there's faith left over to give to others. And if you're lacking faith, may God show himself to supply all your needs. We speak to you a testimony. May you share with us how you have met God and how in these times where you have struggled and questioned things that God has answered, that you have met with Jesus even in the lockdown and beyond. We speak peace to you. Yes, in the words of Jesus himself, peace be with you. May he help you find that courage that lives deep within you. Peace be with you. May he help you find that strength to continue on, even in spite of perhaps uncertainty. Peace be with you. May you continue seeking him out, seeking his kingdom. And as you do so, that your faith will be developed and built and you'll go ahead stronger than you've been before. And we speak also a blessing to the church. May King's Church be a place that is a safe haven mm -hmm. for those who doubt, for those who have questions, for those who struggle with their faith. May they feel not rejected, but welcomed. May we be a place where there is time and space to invite those questions, to entertain them, and to build up our courage, to build up our faith, and to be a place where we all have reason to rejoice that we have met with Jesus. May this be a place where we can say truly, Lord, you are our God.
Thank you, uh, Michelle. Thank you, Wolfgang. And just before we close, I, I want to pray as well. I, I want us to capture this moment that God is speaking peace to us. And the disciples were fearful. They were in a locked room. They, they had fear that they were going to be found out. They did not truly believe at that moment that Jesus was alive. And it's only when he bursts through uh, a locked door that they, they suddenly see him. And um, I want to pray that we would receive peace in times of fear. And so maybe just where you are, you might like to pray along with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that you came, Jesus, to save us, rescue us, to take away our sin, to take away our fear. And uh, we acknowledge that we are living in tough days. We are living in days of lockdown where fear is rampant. And we thank you, Jesus, that you have a message of peace that you have a message that speaks directly into our hearts, that you are for us, that you are with us. And if we should ever question, you know, how, how can I know that God is for me? All we have to do is look to the cross, that Jesus, you are willing to die to have us in your family. And if we turn with hearts that are repentant, if we say, God, I am sorry, I have been living for myself, I've been going my own way, I've given myself over to fear, God, please help me. Every time you say, Steve, I forgive you, and hey, have my peace. And I just want to drink that in this morning. I want to drink your peace in afresh. And I pray for all my brothers and sisters watching this video today. I pray by your Holy Spirit, Jesus, will you send your peace into their hearts, where they are carrying fear, where they're carrying burdens, where there's just life is really hard. 
We ask for your peace to come and, and guard our hearts and guard our minds and, and transform us from the inside out. We declare to you, Jesus, that we love you. We thank you that you are risen and we invite you into our lives afresh. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. We're going to finish there. Um, I do pray for you as you go about this week that you would know our risen Lord, that you would know his peace in your life. May God bless you as you go. May you know him as you walk through these days. God bless you. We'll see you soon.